A Farewell Performance Everything went wrong, and that is what they should put on my gravestone. The actor watched the gunman loading the revolver. It was a strangely pleasant evening, the sun dipping low over Canary Wharf in the distance, and glinting off aerials and satellite dishes on neighbouring rooftops in an interesting kind of way, all a bit West Side Story. Gravestone, the gunman responded. He had a gravelly voice and a cockney accent. No, further down the Thames estuary, maybe. What gravestone? You won't be getting no gravestone. No gravestone? The gunman shook his head. Oh, well, a death notice in the stage, then. The gunman shook his head again. You'll just be missing. No death notice? The actor felt his eyes filling with tears, and not just from the pain of his barked shins. He must have hurt them when the gunman dragged him from the street below, shouldering him into the dingy doorway of an untenanted office block, and then propelling him up five flights of stairs with shoves from the revolver and cuffs to the head. God, that's really mean, the gunman shrugged. He didn't look the sort to indulge much in conversation. He had a shaven head and a broken nose, and the actor thought he looked a bit like Stephen Burkoff. It was the sort of face you got from seeing too much. How old was he? There probably weren't that many years between the two of them, late forties at the most. It's just that I'd like people to know that I'm dead, I mean. They'll figure it out. How? When you don't come round and stuff. Oh, the breath-robbing finality of it, the awful matter-of-factness of death. The actor gulped air. You're going to shoot me now? Right now? Calm down. There's no rush. It's still too light. The gunman cast a glance at the sun. Give it a few minutes. We won't be disturbed. That's why I brought you up here. Anyway, it's worth taking time to do things properly. Sorry, I didn't mean to get hysterical. Forgive me. It must be because I'm an actor. The gunman, distracted, looked him in the eyes for the first time. An actor? Like in the flicks? Might I have seen you in something? Only if you looked very hard. Not a star, then? A very small satellite, maybe, but not a star, no. It hurt to say it, but it was the truth. And truth was all that mattered. Without truth, no performance was worth giving. That was what they had told them at drama school. I've done some tellies, of course, ads mainly, nothing significant. As I said, everything went wrong. The gunman grunted. Like you're so special. I thought I was. Actors do, you see. The sound of sirens drifted up to them from the streets far below. It was rather like a stage, this rooftop, with the city arranged all around them on different levels, like stalls and balconies. The actor could imagine thousands of unfamiliar, passive faces watching to see where things were leading. What happens next? The gunman pulled a face and patted the weapon. Guess. Christ, was there no way out of this? A pigeon battered the air between them, startled to find that there were people on this rooftop where no people usually were. The actor flapped his hands in a despairing gesture. But why? Why are you doing this? I'd like to know. Don't ask me. I just do what I'm told. It's only that I don't think I've done anything that bad. Not worth being killed for, anyway. Is it something to do with drugs? These things often are. The gunman shrugged. Dunno. Because I've never taken any, you see. Probably not drugs, then. The gunman was fitting a silencer onto the gun. So you don't know why you're going to kill me? It was ludicrous, outrageous, not to be supported, like a bad crit in one of the dailies for a performance you had felt in your bones was actually pretty okay, or worse, one in which they didn't notice you at all. Who sent you? Can't tell you that. Critics. There was just no talking to them. It's just that I'm not being funny or anything, but are you sure you've got the right person? The gunman glared, little spots of anger flaring up on his cheeks. 
I'm a pro. I don't make mistakes. Sorry, I just wondered. The actor waited for a moment, trying to sift his thoughts. His shins hurt, and he was conscious of his hands trembling. What would the rest of the cast say when he didn't turn up for the Saturday evening performance? Would they even notice? What would his mother say when he didn't phone tomorrow morning? It dawned on him that by tomorrow morning he would hardly be in a position to care what anybody thought. He was scared. This man was scaring him. He swallowed hard. What'll you do with me? Afterwards, I mean. Wait till it's dark, and then dump you down river somewhere they won't find you. The gunman checked that the silencer was secure, and sighted down the barrel at a distant chimney pot. Is, is that what you're going to do it with? What is it? A Smith and Wesson? The gunman shot him a quick look. How do you know that? I did a couple of bonds, crowd scenes. I know my prop guns. This shooter's no prop, Sonny Jim. Nice gun. Shooter, though. The gunman raised the revolver so the dying sunlight sparked on the barrel. It was my father's. Your father's? He was a contract man, too. Knocked off some tasty marks before he got his. What happened to him? Shot by a police sniper. He was all right, my old dad. The actor tried to remember what they had drummed into him at drama school. Grip the audience. Don't let them go. Pretend you don't know they are there. Keep them on the other side of the fourth wall. We've certainly gone through the fourth wall now, he muttered to himself in a voice taut with despair. You are what fourth wall? The gunman looked about the rooftop, confused. The notional barrier between the performer and the audience. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a stage thing, a way of relating to an audience while not addressing them directly. Huh? The actor grimaced. Some people. Haven't you ever been on stage? Maybe when I was a kid, I don't remember. I made my debut myself while I was still at primary school. The actor grinned nervously, remembering himself as a shepherd in a tea towel and one of his father's big white shirts. We're both performers, when you think about it. We both spend our lives doing what others tell us to. I never refuse a mark, if that's what you mean, said the gunman. Saying no isn't an option in my line. I know exactly what you mean. You have to accept what you're offered. My agent would murder me if I didn't. Literally, in my case. Then the gunman smiled. It was grudging, but quite a warm smile, really, given the circumstances. That was a surprise. I'd still like to know why. What for? I'm an actor. I need to know what my motivation is. The smile on the gunman's face was replaced with a look of irritation. What a bugger are you on about? It's the essence of acting, the key to success. If I don't know why something's happening, how do I know how to react to it? The gunman glowered. All you got to do is fall down dead. Do you think you can manage that? But I can fall in so many ways, slowly, tragically, clutching the fatal wound, or dramatically, arms flung wide, face turned up to an unfeeling god, mouthing the silent question, why, why, why? He threw his arms open and cast an anguished face to the sky. The gunman eyed him with startled disbelief. It would help if you'd fall over the parapet there. Save me having to lug you down all them stairs. The actor lowered his eyes and examined the parapet the gunman had indicated, then took a small step to peer cautiously over the lip. It was a long way down, and he didn't care to lean over so far he could see right down to the concrete pavement and street below. No chance of attracting the attention of anyone down there, then. And the windows in the office building opposite were closed and sealed with blinds. No sign of anyone who might see what was happening up here. Besides, it was the weekend. He lifted his gaze and took in the more distant panorama. That's the National over there, he observed, a note of regret creeping into his voice. The National what? National Theatre. You can just see it between those two new buildings. Oh, right. The gunman's voice conveyed extreme lack of interest. 
I've always dreamed of appearing at the National, but for years now I've only ever done light stuff. Musicals, reviews, you know, Cole Porter, Lloyd Webber, things for the tourist trade, pantos, walk-ons. It's so hard to get noticed if you've got nothing to do. Dunno what you're bleeding about. Sounds like you've done a fair amount. My life's work, as it turns out. God, what a thought. Was that it? What a shame it all was. It's not nearly enough, somehow. The gunman regarded him. You're being pretty cool about this. People aren't usually so calm. I'm scared stiff. This is all a bit more real than I'm used to. The gunman shook his head. You don't seem that scared to me. You must be a better actor than you say. Nice of you to say so. Don't listen to me. I don't know anything about it. But that's the best kind of audience you can have. He fixed the gunman with what he hoped was an impressive stare. How much are they paying you to do this? None of your business. You might as well tell me. It's not like I'm going to be telling anyone else. The gunman considered for a moment, then shrugged. Two thou. Two thousand pounds? Two thousand? Is that all? The actor goggled for a moment, then struggled to regain his focus. What are you going to do with it? I've got debts like anyone else. Credit cards, mortgage. You've got a mortgage? Yes, the gunman sounded offended. Why shouldn't I? It's just unexpected, that's all. And the wife wants a new telly for the kids. One of those HD things. I'm not going to let them down. You're going to kill me for a television set? The gunman shifted his feet and said nothing. The actor fought against the tide of bitterness that threatened to overwhelm him. The injustice of it all. It's ironic, he spat out at last. Perhaps one day you'll see me on it. The tide washed over the actor, drenching him in tearful rage. Me? On your stupid telly? Probably trying to sell you something from beyond the sodding grave. Let's not. Let's not what? Discuss what my sodding legacy is going to be? That all the world will remember of me is a git in a stripy waistcoat trying to sell you sodding toothpaste? That I was the third man from the right jumping into a swimming pool to flog a... a Holiday? Oh, I think I've seen that one. I don't know what it was sodding well for. I hardly ever know. I'm only an actor. Apparently, I don't need to know. He was shouting now, his voice squeaking with anger. His drama coaches would have tut-tutted at his breath control. It was just an ad, a sodding, stupid, sodding ad. I just turn up and do what they tell me. And if I do it well enough, they ask me to do it again. Time after sodding time. That's all I ever do. And now you're going to tell me to die and I'm going to have to sodding do it because no one ever gives me a choice or a reason or half a sodding chance to do any sodding thing else. His voice was shrill and thick at the same time, and his eyes were welling with tears. To the actor's surprise, however, the gunman swore and advanced on him, his own face contorted with anger, his voice gruff. Don't you go complaining to me that you never get to choose what you want to do, not to me! The gunman prodded the actor fiercely with the revolver. What you have to put up with is nothing compared to my life, nothing! Scraping together just enough to stop my family falling apart! Do you know how far that tooth thou will go? How long it will be before I have to do this again? His face was up close to the actor's now, his spit landing on the other's cheek. About a month, that's how long, if I'm lucky! And then the Building Society will be telling me I'm behind with my payments, and if I don't do something pretty soon, my keys won't open the door anymore. So it'll be another rooftop, another back alley, another stairwell, and then another. And sooner or later, probably sooner, there'll be some police marksman who'll get lucky, and it'll be me who gets the bullet. Do you imagine that I sleep nights knowing what's coming, worrying that my lovely kids will have to learn to live without their dad? That my wife, who's bloody gorgeous, will run off with someone else? Do you imagine I don't know all that? Do you? Well, Mr. Bloody Actor, let me tell you, I do know that. I know it all the time. And... Here he stabbed the actor repeatedly in the chest with the gun barrel. I bloody well wish I bloody well did not! They were nose to nose now, the revolver trapped between their bodies. 
The actor breathed fast and shallow. At least you've got time to change things, to make your life better. The gunman opened his mouth to speak, then shut it again. There was a long pause as they eyed each other. Then the gunman's expression clouded, and he took a couple of steps backwards. The actor, conscious of the revolver levelled in his direction, took a small pace to his right, out of the line of fire. The gun followed him. He took a couple more paces towards the gunman, but slightly to his right, trying to get upstage of him. Any actor knew that upstage was the stronger position. Listen, I've got friends in the biz. He spoke low and urgently, like he did that time on the bill. Some of them have got a few quid. If I asked, they might get together and pull their cash. To pay you off, I mean. Give me a break. It's more than my life's worth. The actor thought quickly. Time to make sacrifices. I'll throw in my telly as well. It's not HD, but it's big. I bought it when I appeared in Emmerdale. I'll bring it round any time that suits you. No, no. I'll do anything. He was desperate now, putting on the tears like he did in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern all those years ago. A school production, nothing flash. God, but he'd been good in that. Anything! It's no use. Please! He sank to his knees, hands outspread, pleading to his tormentor. Was he overcooking it? No, a bit of Blanche Dubois was what was needed here. Anything! Chuffing, Nora. Anything at all! There's nothing I want from you. A pause. But there must be something. Well? What? Whatever it is, I'm sure I can get it for you. He said it low and just a bit seductively, struggling to keep the panic out of his voice. Focus. Les liaisons dangereuses. It was only a question of breathing right. The gunman's face was still flushed from his outburst. I'd like you to shut up and let me get on with my bloody job. Eh? Nothing else? No. The gunman checked the state of the sunset, and then gestured with the gun towards the corner of the rooftop. That's about enough of this. Stand over there. His voice had become cold and unfriendly. The actor noticed that his own hands were trembling. God, it was like going on stage for the first time when he was six or seven. Why over there? I don't want the sun in my eyes. I'd rather stand here. Why? It's a better view. I'd like to be looking at the National when I, you know, all I'd see over there is the air conditioning unit. The gunman surveyed the rust-stained metal box in the corner of the rooftop. OK, stay where you are then, it's all the same to me. He raised the gun and spread his legs, clearing his throat, readying himself to make the shot, squinting in the glare of the setting sun. Now hold still or I'll make a mess of it, and we don't want that, either of us. The actor shook his head in bewilderment. If, if it's not drugs, he stammered, is it that money I owe the landlord? What? It's only a couple of hundred, for Christ's sake. Surely he can wait until the end of the week. I've got an audition on Friday. Les Mis, three months' work. I'm sure I'm in with a shout this time. The gunman trained the barrel on the actor's head again. I've never even met your landlord. The actor held up a hand, agitated. Wait, just give me a minute. He had to think this through. Who hated him so much they wanted him killed? A fellow actor? Relationships within the profession were often volatile and brittle. Had one of them become so jealous of him it had made him insane? But what could anyone possibly be jealous of? His paltry successes to date were nothing to get worked up about. No, it couldn't be that. Oi, said the gunman, his view of the target blocked by the upheld palm. When you're ready... I'm just trying to work out who's behind this. One minute and I'll be with you. There were a couple of wronged husbands, of course, and any number of actresses and ASMs and the like, but they hardly counted. Besides, they were all theatre people, not murderous in a real sense. A thought struck him. It couldn't be Lady Macbeth, could it? Oh? I played Fleance years ago when I was about fifteen. She must have been forty-five, but she took a fancy to me, and we had a fumble in the green room after Duncan's murder. Only trouble was she got Kensington gore all over me, off her hands, you see, and of course everyone knew what she'd been up to. 
If her husband had been in the theatre, he probably wouldn't have taken it so hard. But her husband was an accountant or something and left her, and it was months before people forgot about it. She was furious, deranged. They put her away in the end. I was so frightened and upset I haven't done anything legit since. But that was years ago. And come to think of it, I believe I did hear something about her being let out not long ago. It isn't her, is it? No. The gunman sounded impatient. It isn't Lady Macbeth, whoever she is. Now stand still. The actor shook his head with frustration. I don't mean Lady Macbeth herself, but the woman who played her. Oh, God, what was her name? No, it's gone. A tall woman, the big hands, long legs, red hair. Surprise registered in the gunman's eyes. He blinked. The actor slapped his hands together. Ha! So it was her, after all these years, and just because of a silly romp in the green room. Who would have thought it? The mad bitch! Well, at least he knew now. Lady Macbeth. No wonder they called it the unlucky play. The gunman stared at him over the barrel of the revolver, unmoved. The actor collected himself and reluctantly planted his feet where the gunman indicated. Keep still, he told himself. There is strength in stillness. That was what the coaches at drama school always said. Think of standing at the barricade in Les Mis, or before a firing squad at dawn in Journey's End. Don't I get a last request? What? Everyone gets a last request. It's traditional. I bet your father would have granted a last request. Oh, for Christ's sake. Well? Depends what it is. I'm not monkeying about here all night. I know exactly what I want. I want to do something from Hamlet, the graveyard scene. I would never got the chance to audition for the gloomy Dane, so I'd like to give myself the part now. It would mean a lot. My farewell performance. Just a few lines. It won't take long. The gunman sighed. Oh, Jesus. Get on with it, then. The actor slapped a fist into his palm with pleasure, and then tore off his coat. Let's see. You sit over there. No, uh, not there. Yes, there on the parapet. And let me see. What props do I need? Oh, of course. A skull. A what? Yorick's skull. Surely you know the scene. I need a skull to hold. Where the bloody hell do you expect to find a skull? asked the gunman, looking about the rooftop. It doesn't have to be an actual skull. Just something to represent one. The actor patted his pockets for something, but found nothing better than a pen. That won't do. Do you have something? The gunman stuck his free hand into his left coat pocket and pulled out a large bunch of keys. Oh, I've only got these. What about them? I suppose they're better than nothing. And then you'll stop buggering about and let me shoot you. No more last requests. Yes, yes. Hand them over. The gunman tossed the bunch of keys to him. Don't lose them. That's my house keys and everything. The actor was already arranging the keys to his satisfaction, bunching them up in his hands so that they made an irregular spiky ball. Yes, yes, that'll do. Just about. Now, let me see. Try as he might, he couldn't still the excitement that rose in him. His heart was beating fast, and his hands were trembling again to be playing the prince himself, even before an audience of one. That was better than gawping into a soulless camera to sell sofa beds. He tried to imagine himself, not here on a bare rooftop, but centre stage at the Olivier, or the old Vic, better still, at Elsinore itself. In his fevered imagination, the audience was no longer one man with a gun, but hundreds, thousands of eager theatre lovers. There might even be royalty present. He struck a pose, holding the bunch of keys away from him in his extended palm. He concentrated all his being on the glinting metal in his fingers, straining to see it as something else, a mud-stained head with hollow eyes and crooked, broken teeth. His hands became still again. Focus. Remember all the things you have learned for this one last time. Focus. Focus. Alas, poor Yorick. His own voice sounded far away, strange and intense. God, how marvellous it felt. The drama coaches in his head told him to lift the skull higher, to raise the other hand to his chin and give it a ruminative rub. Yes, like that, like that. Let the audience feel your emotions. 
I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. Abhorred. He could hear his old coaches whispering in his ear, make the word reveal itself on the face, stretch the eyes wide, let the mouth drop open. Now you have it. My gorge rises at it. Gag a bit, not that much, less. Stretch out a forefinger and point to the empty mouth. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Sound desperate, surprised, aching, just a little confused. Your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. That was nice, just the suggestion of a roar in the word, but not overdone. Time now for the pathos. Not one now to mock your own grinning. And all at once the change from pathetic tragic to tragic cheeky. Quite chapfallen. Yes, yes, you've got it. Better than you have ever rehearsed it before in your head. Give the skull a little toss in the hand to reveal how nonchalant you are about it. Like that, not too high. Ignore the fact that the skull makes an odd metallic jingling as it turns in the air. Do it again, a bit higher this time. The audience will be watching your every movement now, unable to wrench their eyes away from the skull, fascinated. And now for the final flourish, the voice firm and rising, cruel even. Now get you to my lady's chamber, and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favour she must come, make her laugh at that. And the last touch, hurling the skull, a worthless bauble, highest of all, up into the air, a brilliant, derisive rejection of death and of all the things that limit man's mortality. Up the thing went, up, up above the rooftop, above the air-conditioning unit, and up further still. The actor gazed skywards in ecstasy, imagining his audience rising as one to acclaim this triumph of theatre. He could almost see the arms of the audience stretching to catch Yorick's skull, the trophy of a great performance, as it soared overhead, just beyond the reach of clasping fingers. He watched as the skull reached the high point of its arc, still jingling, and then plummeted through the air beyond the balcony. He sensed, rather than saw, the audience, his audience, glorying in vain at empty air, and then losing all balance, and toppling backwards, arms flailing, still reaching into the void, down, down, down. The actor's head filled with a scream of applause. He closed his eyes, exhausted. The scream ended abruptly in a soft, faraway thump flesh on concrete. When the actor opened his eyes again, the gunman had gone. He looked around for a moment or two, confused. Hello? No reply. Just an empty place on the parapet where the gunman had been, and no sign of the bunch of keys. Odd. He checked behind the air-conditioning unit. No one. Very odd. The man must have changed his mind about carrying out his orders, and slipped away while he had been in the heat of performance. But what a performance it had been, the performance of his life. How had he ever allowed himself to give up Shakespeare? By God, he wouldn't make the same mistake again. Not now it seemed he would have the chance, after all. How marvellous he had been. What a shame the gunman wasn't there to give him his thoughts about it. And he had been good. My God! God, he had been good. Good was hardly the word. Great felt more appropriate. The sun was going down now. The actor approached the parapet and stretched out his arms to accept the applause that still echoed in his head. It was great to be alive and an actor. He bent to take his bow in the glow of the setting sun. He would have to think of a different epitaph. Everything went wrong. Didn't really cover it any more.